All right, guys. Um, so today, since uh, the weather is so bad, what we're going to do is we're going to have our lecture over uh, books 9 through 12 um, asynchronously online. Um, so instead of going to class, what you're going to do is you're going to watch this video. And instead of taking the reading quiz for chapter 11 and 12, uh, you're going to have two um, writing assignments uh, somewhere inside of this video. I'm not going to tell you what they are in the assignment. You're going to have to find them yourselves. Uh, it should be pretty easy to do. But as long as you respond to those two writing assignments, um, then you'll get full credit for the quiz. Um, okay, so I'm going to go through these. We might not get through all of these um, parts of the chapters today, uh, but um, I'm going to try to. So, when we left off, Odysseus was hanging out with the Phaeacians here again in this uh, art piece uh, that doesn't have a credit to it. This is him crying because he heard the song about him having an argument with Achilles. And um, they pester him and they ask him who he is and they ask him to tell his story because he's a great man and he must have great stories, right? And so, finally, he starts telling the story that you guys have already read, um, which is those four different uh, chapters where he gives his flashback of events coming out of Troy. Um, and so, we'll go through those now. The first one that he has is, uh, I don't have a painting of this one, but it's, um, what is it called again? It's him, his people, they land at... Ismarus, and uh, they pillage and kidnap a bunch of people there, uh, because like he said, everyone should be able to get some treasure out of this. He doesn't want to be the only one that ends up with any treasure. This, by the way, is the map of all of the places that he goes, and we'll go through this at the end because it's uh, pretty silly, actually. Um, so, yeah, he goes to Ismer, um, but his uh, they start sacking the place and taking stuff, uh, Ismer was one of the um, allies of the Trojans, and um, uh, the problem is that his men just uh, don't take orders very well. They continue to have discipline problems throughout this entire thing, and so uh, six guys from each ship are killed, 76 in total, and uh, from there they sail on. They haven't pissed any gods off yet, but uh, they will eventually. Uh, the next place that they go is called the uh, Land of the Lotus Eaters. And this is an image here that they've made that uh, Robert S. Duncanson uh, has made depicting the Lotus Eaters. And you can see Odysseus's guys down here, and then you can see all of these happy natives here. Um, lotus flowers, fun fact, are um, opium. That's where opium comes from. So, um, heroin, essentially. Uh, that's what causes all of these guys that go there. Uh, of course, uh, Odysseus sends out a party ahead of everyone. He doesn't go himself. He sends other guys to do it, um, who go and try these flowers, and they get addicted to them because they are heroin. Um, it's actually illegal to grow those flowers in uh, America because uh, you can turn them into drugs. Um, but, yeah, that's what... Um, when he says that they forget their home and they forget going home and stuff like that, that's because they're uh, those three guys that he sends out there are now addicted to smack. And he has to drag them back to their ship and uh, leave, because if all of his men started going out here and trying this stuff, then um, they would all end up addicted as well. Um, he shows uh, good restraint there. He won't show as much restraint later on, unfortunately. And so the next part that we have here is, uh, after that, they go to the land of the Cyclops. And this is another painting. This one is actually from the 1600s. Uh, so a Renaissance painting from when they just rediscovered all of these stories. And so this is, um, uh, Odysseus here and all of 
his men, I think there's too many men there. I think more than them had uh, died at that point. But, um, so, yeah, he goes to visit the Cyclops, and this is the time where you see Odysseus being the most clever. He is very fortunate to bring all that wine with him that's enough to get a giant Cyclops drunk. And um, he's trying to, like, be friends with them and see if he can form some kind of friendship with the Cyclops. And this is also the first time where you see him talking about the um, um, hospitality thing that's so important. Hospitality meaning uh, you have to be kind to guests and you have to um, treat people in your home the right way. And the first example that Odysseus sees of somebody um, doing this incorrectly, of uh, mistreating him in their own home, is the Cyclops. <clears throat> they go to the Cyclops, and um, he um, offers him gifts, and he says, uh, you know, it's uh, you're supposed to give us gifts as well. And the Cyclops shuts them inside and asks where their ships are. And so the first clever thing he does is he lies about the ships, um, next he lies about what his actual name is, and he should have probably stuck with that lie. Um, but he's already, he's like so fast in this, coming up with a plan. He's already worked out in his head all the different problems that could go wrong, all the things that could, um, um, get them all killed anyway. If he, he, they probably could just kill him when he's asleep, but instead they, um, plan out this whole thing where they instead blind the Cyclops and then uh, from there work out how to get him to open the door. They hide underneath the sheep. And um, those of you that remember, I think it's Genesis, uh, will remember the story of another group of people using, another guy using uh, sheep to hide his identity. Um, so... Yeah, they sneak out, bear, uh, tied up underneath the sheep, and um, uh, that's the clever way that they get out of this one. But um, unfortunately for Odysseus, the uh, his pride gets the better of him, and um, at the end, as they're sailing away, he yells back, who his actual name is, because he wants people to remember that it was him that defeated the Cyclops and um, to be famous for stuff. Later on, uh, Odysseus doesn't care as much about these kinds of things, but this time it really gets him in trouble, because that's the only thing that he does that makes um, Poseidon really mad at him personally. There's lots of stuff that his men do later uh, that get him and get all of them in trouble, but... Um, this time he's uh, injured the son of Poseidon and blinded him. And the only reason that the uh, Cyclops is able to get any revenge at all is because he actually knows um, um, uh, Odysseus' name. Um, okay, so yeah, that's the most clever that we ever see him. He's done so many clever things that got him out of that situation. Uh, but just one little lack of cleverness there at the very end is what costs him. Um, so, for your first writing assignment, um, mark this one number one. Tell us about a fictional character, real or fictional actually, uh, someone who got in trouble for pride. This could be a, um, uh, you know, a person from a book, it could be a person from the news, or a person from sports, a person from a reality show, a TV show, whatever you want. But um, write about that, and write about um, what kind of trouble they got into, what, how they were being prideful, all of those kinds of things. You can go ahead and pause the video now and do that now, or you can come back to it later. Um, I'll give you a couple seconds to do that while I get some water. All right. 
Um, assume you have really good answers. I will read them all later. Uh, all right, next one here. The next thing that they do is they go to... Um, this is supposed to be the giants destroying um, all of his ships. This one is called... Let's look at the map again. Let's see. This is the Lotus Eaters, so this one. No, that's the Cyclops. This one. The uh, Lamos. <laughs> uh, this is where he sends his men, and it turns out that the uh, inhabitants there are all giants, and they all destroy the ships. And this is convenient because... Oops. Uh, this is convenient because it uh, whittles down the number of ships so that it's just his now. Um, it's kind of like, it's almost as if he had, like, too many things to keep track of before then, uh, because he had, like, 12 ships before then, and this time, uh, all of them get destroyed except for his own ship, and, um, he manages to get away. Um, okay. So from there, he goes and he meets this guy who has the four winds in a bag. Let's find out the name of that one again. Uh, this was... No, that wasn't... Nope, they're missing one here. Okay, so that one's not on this list. But, yeah, he finds the guy who has... No, it's this guy here. Yeah, it's this guy here. Um, the bag with the four winds. And, uh, from there, he's supposedly trying to get all the way back to Ithaca. And they almost get back to Ithaca, and then the winds blow them back to this place here. Um, so that's one of the first times where the crew not being very disciplined gets him in trouble. And they think that he's, um, they think he's, like, holding out on them. They think the bag is full of gold or something. But, um, they're, the bag is actually just filled with stuff that's going to cause problems for them. Again, it's called Ulysses here because they're going by the Roman translation. Uh, from there, they go to Circe, who, um, like we said before, she turns all of the men into pigs, and, um... Maybe it's possible, it's kind of inferred, that a lot of the animals on the island are um, also re the result of this kind of weird science experiment that she has going there. So, like we said before, they show up on the island and immediately start eating um, the game that they're able to find. They hunt like a deer or something, and they say it's like one of the tastiest deer they've ever had. There's no reason for Homer to put that in there. Um, unless <laughs> they're, they're, you know, eating people and he's implying that somehow. Um, that doesn't seem to bother them later on when they go in and, um, uh, Odysseus is able to overpower this lady and make her, um, change all of his men back. Unfortunately, they are all able to be, like, younger and taller <laughs> than they were before. Which I guess is why everyone's okay with it. But um, she did want to, like, eat them. So, um, yeah, a very strange episode in the Odyssey here where he spends an entire year shacking up with this lady who tried to devour all of his men. Um, this was the quiz you were supposed to have. Uh, but let's go on to the next part. And so the next part here is the most metal part in the whole book. Um, this is where Odysseus actually ends up going to the land of the dead. And he has to go to the land of the dead to talk to... Uh, what's this guy's name again? Um, Tyregis. Uh, because he'll tell him the way home for whatever reason. But while he's there, he ends up meeting a lot of old dead friends. A lot of guys that we mentioned whenever we were talking about the Iliad before. Uh, Tyregis is like an old prophet 
and he has to be the first one to drink the blood, and he explains the rules of the underworld to him, and then he starts meeting all of these other people. He meets his mom. He hasn't um, actually seen his mom in 11 years, remember, and he didn't know that she was actually dead. And so you can imagine how, like, freaky that would be. Um, this is... These are the paintings that I was able to find from this, but there aren't very many good paintings of this scene, and there should be. Um, those, uh, you would think all of those Renaissance painters would go to town on a bunch of skeleton people haunting Odysseus here, but this was the best that we've gotten, unfortunately. And I think most of these are recent. Um, so this one's uh, Tiresias. And then this one is him trying to hug his mom, because you remember whenever he was, um, uh, after he talked to his mom and talked about, like, how she had died because she was sad about him not being home, then he tries to hug her and he can't hug her, because there's nothing, there's no, like, substance to her. Um, he meets... Elfenor, the uh, the guy that fell off the ship, and certainly Elfenor gets like the best funeral of any of his dead friends, um, of uh, any of his crewmen. Most of the rest of them end up just getting devoured by uh, the uh, monster or drowned in the ocean or whatever, but they give that guy a cool funeral after they get home, but not until after he asks for it. And then um, after that, he meets all of these crazy, uh, interesting people that are there from Troy, from Greek legend. Uh, you'll probably recognize a few of them. He sees, uh, he sees the wives of famous people, like the wives and daughters of famous people. So he also he sees um, a lot of people that slept with different gods. And a lot of the heroes in these legends come from that. Um, he mentioned uh, two different... Um, he mentioned a few different times where they, someone would have twins and they would be really strong and big and stuff like that. Some of them were even a danger to the gods themselves on Olympus. But then all of those people got killed and uh, pr were prevented from ever becoming too powerful. The gods were constantly coming to Earth and shacking up with women and creating really spectacular people. Odysseus is a grandson of a god. Um, Achilles was a son of um, a god as well. So most of the really strong, powerful people here are at some point um, the uh, son or daughter of a god. No, just son. Just son. Uh, yeah, so he sees um, Oedipus, who uh, is the guy from the play and also from um, uh, Sigmund Freud's theories that slept with his mom and killed his dad. Um, he sees his wife. He sees the wife of that deal. Um, he also sees, uh, like, uh, he sees some more legend people later on, but, um, yeah, after he sees all those people, he takes that little pause where they remind everyone that this is all happening while he's talking to the Phaeacians, and then he, they tell him, go back and tell us about the, um, heroes of Troy. The first one he talks to is Agamemnon. And Agamemnon, again, was the um, the uh, general in charge of all of the Greeks. And he's Menelaus' brother. Menelaus is the guy that we met in Chapter 4, who was talking to Telemachus. And he tells... Um, and so Agamemnon tells Odysseus about um, how um, uh, he got home and... His wife was having an affair and murdered him at his own table and killed Cassandra. All that stuff that we talked about before. Um, yeah, and so he sees the other side of that story. He actually gets it from Agamemnon himself, whereas uh, Telemachus got it from Menelaus. And 
Um, yeah, and then they just talk for a while, and then they meet Achilles down there. It doesn't even say that Achilles drinks from the blood. Uh, maybe it's implied or whatever, but it seems like Achilles is too tough to even need to. Achilles is, uh, again, the most tough person at Troy. He's the guy that we were talking about who um, lost his best friend and then killed Hector and then um, finally at the end was the one that called the truce. And so this is after, later on in the war in Troy, he is shot in the heel with a arrow and dies and ends up going down here. And now we see him hanging out with um, Patroclus and Ajax the Greater. And he has the most famous line probably in the whole book, which is where he says that it's better to rule, um, it's better to, uh, um, to serve as a dirt farmer in uh, the real world and live a long life than it is to be the king down here in the underworld or in the uh, land of the dead. And um, yeah, it's mistranslated a lot uh, where other people say it the other way. I think it's um, uh, somewhere in, it might be somewhere in Paradise Lost where the, uh, they get it the other way around. But, um, yeah, that's Achilles, and then he tells Achilles about his son, and how great he is, and then he talks to Ajax, and so, some context for the Ajax thing. Um, after Achilles died, uh, I'm, I'm assuming this is Achilles, um, uh, his armor is still left there, and there's an argument between um, Ajax and Odysseus as to who should get the armor. It comes down to a cleverness contest, and if it's a cleverness contest, Odysseus is always going to win. And so he ends up being the one to get the armor. And Ajax took that so personally that he threw himself on his own sword and killed himself. And so um, Odysseus is trying to talk to him, and he's like, um, you know, come and talk to me. It doesn't matter anymore. Bygones are bygones. But Ajax doesn't see it that way. He is still mad, even though he's been dead for, you know, a couple of years at this point. Um, <clears throat> so, after that, we see a whole bunch of people from uh, famous Greek tales. We see Sisyphus, who you've heard of before, I'm sure. The guy that... Um, pushes the rock up the hill, and it falls back down again. We see a bunch of other ironic torment, like the guy who's um, hungry all the time, and he reaches for grapes, and they they get pulled away too far for him to get to, and the guy who is, um, and um, yeah, there's another guy that's getting tortured by vultures for whatever reason. Uh, last one we see is uh, Hercules, who it's, uh, the Greeks called Heracles. We call him Hercules because we're still stuck doing it the Roman way. Uh, but his name is Heracles for real. And, um, he's the son of Zeus, but he's very imposing down there in the underworld. He's walking around with his bow, and he even talks to Odysseus, and he's like, yeah, you're even less lucky than I am. Um, so from there, they manage to escape and get out of hell. If you ever want to paint a Renaissance picture of Odysseus in the Underworld, then I would highly recommend it. Here's a better picture of the Underworld. This is from, um, uh, this is a Renaissance painting. This is from Jacob de Van Swanberg. Interesting. Never heard of this guy. But, um... This is a painting that he's made, but this one is from um, the Aeneid, which is a book that rips off the Iliad and the Odyssey that the Romans wrote later. Uh, so, yeah, you can see how this is starting to get more into the realm of, like, uh, Dante's Inferno, which was probably more inspired by, which was definitely more inspired by the Aeneid, because um, Virgil, the poet of the Aeneid, is the guy that uh, shows Dante around in hell. Um, all right. So, one more writing assignment. Uh, for this one, do you think ghosts are real? 
if yes, uh, why are they here? What are they doing here? What kind of business do they have here? If no, uh, why do people believe in them? Um, I'll give you a couple minutes, a couple of seconds to pause the video while I get more water. Okay, guys, uh, make sure, um, I'm assuming you're replaying the video now or you're going to go back and do these later. Make sure you have uh, this one marked as number two, the other one marked as number one. And um, uh, turn both of these in when you're done. So um, once he's done in um, the underworld, they go back and they bury Elfenor. And um, based on uh, Tyregis's, um, uh what he told him, he knows what to do now. They first have to go and they have to deal with the harpies. And this is what the harpies looked like, or the sirens, rather. Uh, this is a pretty good picture, actually. Um, this is J.W. Waterhouse. I should add the dates for this one, but I'm pretty sure this is from the 1800s. And um, there's not enough dudes on this ship, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, for some reason... Um, Odysseus has to be the only one that hears it. Everyone else has to cover their ears, and they have the beeswax, and they got these um, these caps over their heads. And uh, you can see what these people look like, these ladies here. Not particularly sexy to look at, but um, maybe if you're a sailor, it's probably pretty alluring. Uh, my favorite part is this part right here. <laughs> this guy is... Uh, she's really glaring at this guy here who's rowing the oars but uh yeah their their song is supposed to be um alluring to the point where it brings it causes uh sailors to crash into the rocks because they're so um interested in talking to these ladies um but only odysseus can hear them uh, so they get past this one unscathed. They're good after this. But then they have to deal with the worst thing of all, which is, um, uh, this is, this is Scylla and Chiberis. And, uh, uh, Scylla is a giant six-headed monster that just hangs out on the cliff and it eats people all day. And then the other thing is a monster that goes underneath the ocean and creates a um, whirlpool. And those are... The whirlpool thing is based on real things that happen in the ocean. Um, where uh, they... Um, uh, it's, it's like going in and out with the tides, something like that happens. Uh... The uh, the monster that they face here is interesting because they describe it like it's uh, catching fish, like um, where the the men that it catches are just as helpless as uh, uh, the fish that a fisherman might catch. And you can see kind of how that would go along with the psychology of um, somebody who catches fish all day and probably even empathizes with them a little bit. Um, like, what if you're the fish, right? And so he can't tell his men where that this is about to happen, but he knows that about six of them are about to be killed, and he does his best, but it doesn't matter. Um, and so they have to swim through this little gap here. They swim past the um, um, whirlpool, and then they are in the real biggest danger that they have, which is where they go to... Uh, the island where the sun god keeps all of his cattle. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, um, but this happens, I mean, this happens in, like, Christianity, too. But these gods are, like, tempting them to do things that will piss them off, just for no reason. Like, uh, they trap them on this island for several days, and, um, 
make sure that they run out of food and then show them all of these beautiful juicy cattle that are just hanging out there uh you know just to just to make them eat seems kind of cruel i guess but that's so it goes uh odysseus knows better than to kill the cows and he tells them you know you got to take an oath that you're not going to you know try to eat any of these cows there's going to be some really cool cows on this island you don't want to eat them um but then he falls asleep and his men eat them anyway and um um odysseus at this point is clever enough not to join in and eat the cows as well and that's probably the only reason that he survives this but everyone else is obviously going to die and uh they start to realize something's wrong when the cows start coming back to life i don't know if how many of y'all caught that but like the cows start like mooing and moving around even though they've all been chopped up and put on skewers and stuff like that and uh these guys they just keep eating them i don't at some point i probably would try to stop but um they you know they can't help themselves this, by the way, is, uh, this was painted uh, by a Spanish guy in the 1600s, and there was this um, movement in art right then where they would try to paint things um, as though they were happening in modern times. So there's a lot of, like, um, art from then where you see, um, like, Christ and uh, the Virgin Mary and stuff like that, but it's all taking place where people are dressed up as conquistadors and stuff like this. So the, all these guys are dressed up like the same, kind of the same as people that uh, went to the New World, and this ship looks all wrong because their ship wouldn't look like that. This is a, a contemporary ship, but with oars on it. Um, okay, and so he wakes up and he's mad at all of them. And, uh, naturally, it goes exactly the way you would expect it to. He gets, um, they all get, uh, killed by Zeus, because Zeus, uh, punishes them for eating this, these cows that he trapped them on an island with. And, um, um, only, uh, only Odysseus survives, and then he gets trapped on an island with Calypso for several years. So, uh, last thing I'm going to go through with you for today is this picture here. This is a map of all of the places that he went in his travels. And you'll notice that it doesn't make a huge amount of sense. So, they start off here at Troy. Um, this is Troy. This is Ithaca. So, it's not a very far distance. That's like, um, not, not far at all. They should be able to make that in a few days. And... Most of the heroes of Troy do make it back in a few days. But they go to Ismarus, and then they go to uh, this, um, what is it? Yeah, this is where he's blown off course for the first time. Um, which, you know, that's a reasonable way to go. And then he ends up here, where uh, the land of the Lotus Eaters. And... That should have taken probably several days to get there. Um, he starts trying to go back to um, Ithaca. They stop off at the Cyclopses. I guess it makes sense to go to the Cyclopses on the way to Ithaca. But then, leaving the Cyclopses, they get blown off course again. Um, they end up here with the bag of air. They try to go back to Ithaca again. And somehow they wind up all the hell the way over here. Um, where the, um, is that in order? I think that's, that might be the right order. Maybe I got mixed up. Uh, this is, uh, where the giants crush their ships. Then they end up here where they're hanging out with Circe for all that time. And then they go to the underworld and then they try to get back. Um, here's where they do have the sirens. Here's where they have the um, whirlpool and the six-headed monster. And then um, very close to getting back to Ithaca, and then their ship gets smashed. So, um, I don't know. It makes more sense now that I'm looking at this map than it originally did, I guess. One thing you have to remember is that um, because they're sailing these 
ships that were from like 3,000 years ago. They have oars and they have uh, sails and they're not really designed to sail in the deep parts of the sea. Um, because of that, they're trying to stick close to land the entire time. And so that kind of makes sense, I guess. But it wouldn't take you 10 years to do all of this. Um, the Mediterranean just isn't that big. It's like 3,000 miles across. So, um, uh, yeah, somehow he manages to get lost in it for 10 whole years. But, I mean, we've heard of other people getting lost for longer periods of time in smaller areas. If, uh, again, if you remember, um, I guess this would be uh just the first few chapters of the bible again they get lost in a pretty small desert for 20 years and uh finally find their way out so maybe it's pretty much the same thing okay guys um so those are the uh four uh main chapters of the odyssey after that you're going to read chapters uh 14 and 16 i think is what we said yeah uh, skip 13 and read 14, skip 15 and read 16. The chapter 14 is going to be where uh, Odysseus meets um, his, uh, like his gardener for the first time after coming back. He starts to see the state of his land, um, and in chapter 16 he meets Telemachus again, and we get to see them reunited and start forming a plan to deal with all of the... Um, um, uh, suitors that are there. We'll also talk about some drama with uh, the gods and how their uh, pantheon is formed, some different people that they sleep with, and I have some other stuff, but I don't know where it went. Okay, so uh, yeah, make sure those two writing assignments are turned in. That's the end of your um, of the work that you need to do for this uh, Wednesday. Uh, Monday, make sure to have read chapters 14 and 16. We will quiz over those on Monday. See you guys then.